Hi guys, today we're going to do a, uh, let's see, a Blue Jay. And I um, had a request for a Blue Jay. So, um, first of all, I want you to do, you got your background done, we did that in another video. And the Blue Jay, uh, you, can, you can trace it off of a photo that you get free online. Or you can freehand your Blue Jay, but make sure you put it on paper first. Don't try to do it on your canvas because you'll just be really difficult. And then all you have to do then is tape it on your canvas, put your carbon paper on there, underneath there, and trace it over. But first of all, what I want to do is I got my background done, but I want to sit them on a log. And whether it's a he or she, I don't know because apparently Blue Jays, males and females, um, they look alike. It's, you can't tell them apart. The only way you can tell them apart is their nesting habits. So, um, first of all, I'm going to try to put the log here so the blue jay can sit on it. So what I'm going to do is make it very simple. I'm going to take, I only have my primary colors and a bit of black and white. So, you can use ultramarine blue, cad red, cad yellow, and black and white. So I'm going to try a little, some black on one side of my brush and white on the other side of my brush. And let's see how that works out. So with the black side down I'm just going to touch. I drew it out first so I'd know where it was going to go. So I'm just going to touch and pull. Touch and pull. And I haven't got enough paint on so I'll get lots more paint. And touch and pull and touch and pull and that will give you now I'm using a hard bristle brush it's pretty well worn out and that will give you all those nice separations of color and you don't have to work real hard at it just a simple way to do a little log we can always adjust a few things after so that's just a little log that the blue jay is going to sit on like I said we'll just anything we need to adjust after as long as you get your little log there first. So, if you mess it up and you need to go over it again, just double load your brush again with black and white. Black on one side and white on the other. Black side down, touch and pull, touch and pull, touch and pull. And like I say, you can adjust all this after. So we'll just do that now to get that done. And when that dries, then we can put our blue jay on. So now that you've got the log there for the blue jay, let's transfer our blue jay to our canvas using our carbon paper. Okay, make sure you can see this. So you just put the carbon paper underneath. And you make your transfer just by tra transferring the lines to the canvas. So just grab a pen and go over your lines. And if you make a few mistakes or you make it go outside lines or crooked or miss lines or whatever, don't worry about it because we cover up these lines and you can always adjust them. So don't worry too much. Let's just go over our beak. There we go. And we're going down over the chest. Good. So keep doing that until you get your whole blue jay done. Now lift it up to make sure it's all coming out on your canvas. There we go. Make sure you didn't miss any lines. And just keep going until you get everything in that you need to use in order to paint. So that goes for anything that's an object like a house or you can do lots of things freehand but sometimes it's a little complicated and you can't get the perspective right or you can't get the shape right. So this kind of speeds up the process because you want to paint. You're not really, if you're drawing then you can measure and use the grid method whatever it takes to get your drawing done. But right now we're just doing a painting, so we just want to get as much on there as we can. Make sure you didn't miss any lines. And then if you're happy with your drawing, and it's on there okay, you can take this off. 
All right, so now it's off. You can't go back because you won't be able to line it up. So once you take it off, it's off. So make sure that you're happy with the way it's drawn before you take it off. Okay? Now, first of all, I th I'd like to start with the beak and the eye. So why don't we start with the beak. and the eye. So let's just take a bit of dark paint. We can make some almost black paint by using blue, red, and yellow. And that'll give you a really dark look. It's almost as black as the black. So if you don't want to use black, you don't have to. You can just use the red. Use the primary colors to get the really dark color. So let's just do the beak first. So put in your beak. Good. Paint that in with a small brush, small round or flat brush. If you got a flat brush, make sure it's chiseled edged. I'm just using a little round brush there now to get at the beak. And it might start off funny and look weird and everything, but you got these ugly stages and you got, and then you finish it up and it, you have a nice stage. So that's the beak, same colors. Let's put it on the eye. Let's just put in the eye. And you can leave a center, you don't have to. Let's not bother with the center right now. We'll put that in after the highlight, I should say. Okay, so we'll just, we have the eye done. Good. That's that much. Fix any adjustments that you need to fix. And Good. Now you want some, let's see, I'm going to get a flat brush, chiseled edge, as you can see it's chiseled edge, it's really skinny on the top, like, you know, like sharp. And what you can do is get some blue paint and a little bit of red and a white brighten it up a little bit and then we'll do the head. Alright, so we'll put some blue on the head part. And what we'll do is we'll go with a lighter color. Make it easy. I don't want to make it too complicated. Just put a little more white there and brighten it up a little bit in the front. Now wet on wet. Why do we use wet on wet? Do you know? So we can blend the color. See how nicely that blended right there? Good. So we're working on the head. So I'm going to see if I can get a little closer for you. Let's just work on one piece at a time. I find it much easier when you just take one piece at a time and it helps it helps you just concentrate on one piece at a time rather than a whole subject. So we have some blue and white here. It's a bit more white around the eye, so I'm just using the chiseled edge brush. Little white here. That's all. And then we have clean your brush off, get most of the blue off, just wipe it off in your tissue, and get just white for now. And we'll go down to actually. Let's let's go with the blue for an underpainting. Let's just go with a light blue for an underpainting for here for the, for the feathers. Good. Whites and blues. Just for the underpainting because that will make your white stand out more. And underneath there, a little bit underneath the beak and a little bit up here. I'm going to punch this in. Push, 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 push. A little bit here and just fill it in with your white. There we go.
go. Good. Now, we're going to keep your brush dirty, it's okay, and use a bit of that blue paint. Add a little bit more blue to, your, to that blue paint. Darken it up. And put a little bit on the beak here. Yeah, there we go. Leave a bit of the black there is okay. For the shape. And put a little bit of blue in here just for shadows. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna do that for now. For now, like I say, we're gonna make sure that we get rid of those lines too. So just make sure you, you go over those lines so that they can't see them anymore. There we go. Good. A little bit of feather going out here. So you may have to go over things a couple of times just to uh, get it the way you want it. So working on the head, just follow along. Make it easier on yourself. Just put some blue and some white on there. Now underneath, right here, there's some black. So we'll go back with that dark color of blue, red, and yellow. And that will give us our nice dark color. Almost Now my brush is dirty, so it's a bit light. So I'm going to add a bit of black. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean my brush. Now that will show you that if you don't clean your brush properly or change brushes, you can't get the color you're looking for because it's... Just other colors on your brush. That's a good lesson. I don't mind making mistakes. I like showing you mistakes. All right, here we go. Blue. Are you there? Are you there? There you are. And red. Red. And a bit of yellow. Get that nice dark color. There it is. Okay, so take that those colors and put it underneath here. See how it's not pure black? It gives a nice color. Gives it at least some color. Good. Just using a chiseled edge brush for now. So there's your dark color. Might have to go over it again because it's a little transparent there now possible that my brush was a little dirty. We also have that little black, a little bit of black here by the eye. So use the same colors, the dark color, and put it in here. These are all just feathers. So we'll go over that again now to feather all that up. So you got that much done. And if you want to redo the eye again, just to, to thicken it up. There we go. Good. And we can straighten up down here. This little bird has something in its mouth, I think. I'm, I'm looking at one of the pictures. I got for free online, but uh, I'm just going to get you to concentrate on what I'm doing here now. Because if you look at, if you compare it right now, you might want to do something different. So you get your own picture and make sure that um, you get some of these techniques and you should be able to do your own. Good. So take your flat chisel brush again and then add some pure white to it both sides, chisel it up, and then take the white over the blue that you did for the underpainting for the feathers, and just put on a few of these little feathers here just to get it started. Good, and a little bit out here. We'll use a liner brush now too because the chisel edge brush is good, but Try to get a little more of a feathery look. Let's see, just use the corner of your brush if you have to. Just pull out, pull out, pull out. 
that's it. Pull out all the white, all the underpainting that you did for the white feathers. Just go back over those with some white and you'll see that some of the underpainting still is there. Come down around the neck. Try to come uh, and use the same shape as the head. Because if you make your lines back at the fort like this, it won't look right. Good, so we go over here. Some white, and there's tap on a little bit of white here. And then just bring it up here like this. Softly. A little more on here just to get the feather look. Just feather it on. <laughs> feather it on. There we go. Now, let's take the end of our brush, put a bit of white on it. You can use a toothpick also if you like, and just put a little dot in here for the eye. That brings it out a bit better. Good, and now darken up underneath there again with the red, yellow, and blue. Get your dark color again. Mix it up so that it looks nice and dark. And let's go over this again to darken it up. Good. So the head's probably going to be the hardest part. Go over your lines so that you don't see those black lines that we drew. This comes down around here. Ends a little bit under here. Just push in a few little dark lines. Just a few little dark lines. Now, the next step, we're not finished with that yet, but we'll we'll just move on to some different places. As we get it rolling along, then we'll come back and adjust anything else that we need to do. So on the back, this big part here is just a blue color. So just get your flat chiseled edge brush again. Flat chiseled edge brush and it's not a very big brush, it's only small. Just a small chiseled edge brush because you don't want it too big, you won't be able to work. So take some blue and take some little bit of red and white, brighten it up. There we go. It's got almost a purplish look to it. And we'll just put that on the back. Just put that in there, just fill it in. That's it, fill it in. Go with the shape of it. I'm going across there just to get underneath that black there. But then come on down the shape of the back. Fill that in nicely. Get rid of those dark lines. Fill it in with your blue, purplish blue. There we go. More blue. So match it up. When you go back to get your color, sometimes you can't get the exact same color, but that's okay because it makes them more interesting. We got some different colors going on there. See, I'm not matching up all the time. Might add a little bit of white just to make it opaque, which means you can't see through it. Transparent paint is, is good for um, a glaze. I showed you some glazes in my other videos. How to glaze. You could glaze this one after if you want. You could put Mod Podge on it. I did a, a video on Mod Podge, how you can make your paintings beautiful and everything like that and protect them. Protect them. Okay, good. Now we could take a little bit of our dark color. 
Let's take our dark color. You remember the, do you remember colors are put together to make it nice and dark? Good. So to make this a little feathery, let's just bring in a few of these dark lines into here. And if it won't work, get some water and away to go. Good. Oops. I turned my head for a second and look what I did. <laughs> so let's clean that up. Just by getting some more blue to match it up a little bit. There we go. And some white. Give it more of a feathery look up here. Up here. A little bit of a feathery look. We don't need a big lap, but there we go. Now I have a bunch of br brushes there. This one is probably giving me a little bit of a hard time, so I'm going to try some different brushes. Let me try, let's see, a thicker, thicker brush, liner brush. Let's try that. Yeah, so get a package of them. They're not very expensive. You can buy them any any craft store, and there's probably about ten of them in one package for a couple of dollars. So be worth getting. So just to do some touch-ups right here. Probably a little more blue to match it up a bit better. There we go. I'm trying to get the feathery look for you so that you can make it more natural looking. Good. And then you're going to bring, now you can eat, yeah, you can bring some of that dark color into the white to get your dark color and bring it into the white. We'll get a little bit of a feathery look. A little bit. You can also take some white and blue, a little tiny bit of red, and then you can take that. I'm just mixing up some colors on my palette here. Now I'll tell you the colors and then we're basically using the same colors that I mentioned before. And you can take that out a little bit and take it out, take it out, take it out, bring it into the black. So you can go either way. Take the black into the white or take the white into the black. And that way you'll still get feathery look. Just put some white on top of there just to lighten it up a bit. That gives a bit of a feathery look. There we go. So enough puttering around with that one. And now what we can do is we can put a little bit of that dark color as a shadow around the eye a little bit. Just a little bit of a shadow there. Not much, but just a little bit of a, a line around here, around the eye. Yep, and a little bit of darkness coming out of the feathers here. Just these simple little techniques to make it look feathery. Good.